Good afternoon, everybody, on this beautiful Saturday. There is rain all around. If you're in Cape Town and you've managed to keep your beautiful feet um, standing up straight, because I believe you've had like 200 kilometer an hour winds, trees have been uprooted. But the good news is your dams are full. What was it? 99.6% Tweer Waterskloof. Unbelievable. We have had beautiful rain all across the country, um, and for that we are truly blessed. So welcome to this virtual event. Um, I am live. I am broadcasting from Westville, KwaZulu-Natal, um, and it really is a privilege to be with you today on behalf of Builders Warehouse. Uh, folks, uh, I am their gardening, their gardening person, their gardening guru, they like to call me, but hi, Bo. Um, I don't know if anybody really wants to garden today because it's pretty miz. It really is. Um, but folks, uh, I'm here for the next 30 minutes. Uh, we've got an awesome slideshow to take you through. Um, please get your questions because folks, 15 minutes, I'm going to be giving you my time. And that is, that is anything that you've got. And no question is a silly question. Okay, please. No question is silly. So whether it's snails, whether it's uh, roses, whether it's what to spray, what to plant, how do I deal with it? Uh, heads up, uh, monkeys and moles are a no-go zone. <laughs> and um, But no, really, guys, um, any question, if you've got something on, and whether it's pro property related, whether this is your game or not, um, we're here for you. Um, and it really is a great honor and pleasure. So uh, I see Tracy Miller is there. Lots of lots of cappy handies and green hearts. I love the green hearts. I really love the green hearts. Um, so folks, remember, get your questions going. Um, don't be shy. Uh, don't be scared that you might type it out incorrectly or that somebody's going to be watching me because it's okay. All right. So folks, let's get into it. We're talking gardening tips and tricks now. The whole term gardening can be sometimes really overwhelming, and, and there are various reasons for this. Number one, we've all of a sudden become a homeowner, yeah, and we're like in our mid-30s or whatever, owning our first home. Worst of all, we might have moved into a place that had previously the mother-in-law, okay? So you've now inherited it, moved into that space, and there's a beautiful garden. Along with gardening comes this thing called emotion emotion because gardens are emotional things um, they are parts of our lives that fill many many gaps and it's not only just for beauty it really isn't there's is so much more uh, more to it uh, there's legacy there's indulgence uh, there's keeping things going for other other reasons more than just keeping it beautiful um do do Wonderful to have you here. Peter Brown. Peter Brown, good day to you. Um, oh, my goodness. You own a fish farm and my project can get more farms and businesses. How can I grow the agriculture with low cost? Okay, dude, you got big questions there, but we're going to get to them. Lychee trees stop bearing. Um, Farad, lychee trees, very, very interesting. I'm going to get to you. Um, does speaking to plants really help them grow? Tracy asked. Tracy, I'm going to tell you a very, very quick story. Um, and this is to do uh, with a lychee tree. In fact, it was a lemon tree. So wait for it here. This lady had done everything to the lemon tree. She'd fed it with 515. She'd fed it with a good organic fertilizer. She tried a lot of things. And the said lemon tree uh, just would not um, produce lemons. So she went outside one day with the broomstick and gave it a good few cracks. True story on its stem, cracked it with the, with the broomstick. And lo and behold, a couple of months later, the lemon tree flowered um, and fruited subsequently. Uh, so what isn't it about talking to plants? Um, it's actually been proven. Um, and if you want to re re read a really good book, um, find the uh, a book called The Secret Sex, Li Sex Lives of Plants. A true story done on experiments with plants, uh, looking at tone, um, looking at beat and how they react. Do they? Of course they do. And um, they are, are living creatures. Um, there is energy that goes through them and we know that. So 
talk to them, but talk to them in tone. It's all about tone. But you probably think I'm really crackers right now, but that's okay too. So, um, guys, let's get into the into the PowerPoint. I'm going to share with you um, some gardening tips, and and really, I hope that you that if anything sparks any consideration or any ideas whilst you're going through it, please bang through the question and I'm going to get through to them a little bit later. So number one, it's all about lawns. Remember, the lawn can make or break your garden space. And coming out of winter, we into spring now, things are still a little slow. Yes, because it's cold in certain parts of the country. It still is really cold. Lawn works on temperature and it awakens through temperature and it awakens purely through the amount of nutrition and water that they get. Now, of course, going into the winter months, it's there's far less rain except if you're in the Cape, um, and water is really important. We do know as well that water is really expensive. So you've got to think smartly when deciding on what type of lawn to put down and how you're going to maintain it. Importantly, what I need you to think about are the different types of lawns. So they're, they're basic types. There's kukuyu, which is known as quirk. You can get it in seed form, guys, um, which is fantastic because it really is easy to put down, especially now in the early spring months. If you do your preparation correctly, and it's all about preparation, guys. It's like building houses. If you don't get the foundation right, your house is going to go one way. And it's the same with the garden. It's all about the soil. Feed the soil, improve the soil, make sure that's right, and then you can have a gorgeous garden. And what is important, and I'm going to bring up um, this slide over here, and what is important, guys, is that to get that look, to get that look, you need to do the prep right. And it worries me intensely when spring comes along and I see a lot of people on the sides of the road that are selling so-called topsoil. Folks, it is not a good idea. Please, 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 it really is not a good idea to buy bags of topsoil or compost from the side of the road. You need to buy from a reputable garden center. In other words, pop down to your local builders, buy the stuff in the bag that says compost because it's gone through a special screening. You guarantee it has no weeds, it has no rocks, and it is not the, um, what do they normally sell you as topsoil? Oh, I call it like the um, the fill <laughs> from, from the building site that they needed to remove the soil of. Yeah, that's what you ended up getting. Um, so guys, please make sure that you use the right product. The only time that you are going to be using top dressing, because I'm asked this a lot about lawns and how to fix lawns. The only time you are going to be using top dressing is when your lawn is severely crinkle cut. Okay, so when your lawn has got big dongers, that's when you put top dressing on. But folks, you do not put top dressing on like a thick layer. You've got to do it gently in little additions. So it's a small amount, making sure that the leaves, the blades of lawn, still peek through. As soon as it grows through, you then add the next layer. If you have not done spring treatment of your lawns, then do this now. 232, which you pick up at your local builders. Big bag of 232 on the lawn first. Please, folks, don't be tempted to buy the 713 yet. Very important because 713 just encourages, you got it, greening. 232 encourages good rooting, good solid structure. That's what we need first. If you don't get the roots right, you're not going to get the top right. Okay, so 232 down first. If it's raining, which it is now almost across South Africa, get out there and run around like Mary Poppins and throw the 232 down. Because it's a chemical fertilizer, it's important that you do water it in. If you want to use an organic product, then look for something like Atlantic Bio Lawn, which you can get in 10 kg bags. Put it on and you've got no no worry that it's going to burn your lawn at all. Right, so that's lawns. They make or break a good garden. Guys, let's get on to the next one. Um, this is about edging. Edging, folks, is so important because it keeps the garden beds that side and it keeps the flowers here. It defines your space. So you've got the lawn and then you've got the garden beds. In many, many gardens that I've gone to, I've seen this and you've seen it as well. Garden bed, okay, here. Garden bed, trees, donga. <laughs> Come on, you're with me. I know you're with me. Donga. And then, oh, lawn over here somewhere. And there's the gap 
keeps opening and opening and opening. Um, I call it continental drift. Um, because one day uh, you walk outside with your cup of coffee and you're like, the lawn moved. It got smaller. And yes, that happens to so many homeowners. Why? Because we give our garden executives, our garden helpers, could even be the husband, a spade to cut the lawn edges. Folks, put something down as simple as this. And I want to show you with my little pointer here. Um, as simple as this, guys. I have just used bricks. This is a clay, a common clay brick. Have a look at it there um, to define the edge. So when you're mowing, you can literally put the lawnmower wheel on this brick edging. Yep, on there. The other lawnmower wheel is obviously there, and away you go. You can then use, if you don't want to do that, because like me, you know, I want the leaves just to cascade over the edge, just to soften that edge a bit. So then what you would use is a little trimmer. You can even get a good sheep shear, which are great for cutting edges, but edges define your space and they stop that moving of those large dongas. It's the only way I can describe it. I don't know if there's a, another word. Craters. Yes, um, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I also like to call them, um, in certain gardens, you've seen it, they're called puppy dog graves. <laughs> yes, it is that because they're like the soil is heaped up around the plant. Nowhere in nature do you see soil heaped up around plants. Nowhere in nature. And remember, gardening is an expression or an emulation of what we want in our own environment, which is the place that we call paradise. All right, let's get on to the next slide. Another form of edging, which is really, really good in modern day gardens, we find a lot of pebble being used. Now, pebble is fantastic. Why? Because it's really good for security. You use pebble around the house because normally a lot of homeowners find splashing, okay, up on the walls, dirty the walls, awful mess, okay, awful mess. Generally, lawn battles to grow under there. Why? Because it's in the rain shadow, okay? Because of the eaves. So you're going to battle and battle and battle. And if lawn won't grow somewhere, stop fighting. Get rid of it. That is my firm favorite. If it won't grow, stop fighting with it. Get rid of it. Rather put down some gravel or a really good, tough, indigenous ground cover that will do the job. But I love gravel. Put it around because when people go, when they're walking, you hear it, you're alerted to it. Low maintenance, it certainly doesn't need to replace. And always remember to use the weed fabric. It's called Weed Guard. You buy it in rolls from your local builders. And guys, remember the Weed Guard is actually recycled two liter Coke lids. Yeah, you know the plastic, plastic lids? That's what it is. So it's a thick woven fabric that you lay down and then you put the pebbles on top of that. The reason for that is it stops the pebbles from disappearing into the soil. Yes, because many of you have spent really good money on bags of stones, emptied into the garden, and you're like, a couple of months later, where have you gone, guys? What happened? What ate the stones? Well, there ain't nothing that eats stones except the soil. So remember to put down your weed fabric. Really, really important. Look at this over here. Pathways, edging, really important. Here is another little type of brick. Remember, you can use a paving. So you can use an ordinary paving, which we call a rectangular paver. You can use that as an edging, bury it in, and it works brilliantly. The other thing that you can use is a little cobble. Now, cobble edging also works well, and it's very inexpensive. So there we are couple of different ways on how you can maintain an edge. And look, gravel in the pathway works brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Okay, moving along. Guys, the choice of plants. It's really important that you choose wisely. Going into summer now, I want to give you a few plants that are going to work brilliantly in your garden, and especially if you're on a budget. Okay, so think about these over here. Um, I want to show you these agapanthus Brilliant. You get them in the white, you get them in the blue. Guys, there are so many different varieties of them from dwarf little plants to some that get up to 50, 60 centimeters in height. Consider using those. The plant on the right over here, where my, that is called an osteospermum. You will find them in abundance um, at your builder's garden centers today. 
They're indigenous. They love the sun. They're great on banks. They're good in pots. Man and the butterflies just love them. Okay, moving it down, remember to always deadhead. And if it means picking, then do that. But what does deadheading mean? It means when the flowers are spent, always, always remove the spent flowers so that you can encourage new growth. Okay, another good tip if you have restricted space. A lot of people have restricted space and they say, well, I don't want to garden down there. It's also an age thing. You know, like, why well, garden down there? Like, you know, it, it, gets a bit, it gets a bit difficult. Huh? Raise the beds. Raise the beds can be done simply by using blocks, cheap blocks. Okay, use blocks. Today, the cladding options, the tiling options are insane, guys. Just insane. And they're also very inexpensive. So look out for the specials. Look out for things that will work for you. It could even just be a simple bag washing on a raised wall. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the top, top end. It could work here and still do the same job. All right, isn't that beautiful as a lovely raised plant? Just spectacular, um, lovely, filled with the plants of summer, filled with geraniums, filled with verbenas, little mini petunias, and those are the plants that we want. Okay, pots. Guys, I'm mad about pots. And if there's one way, if you want to increase and just improve the area within your home, and even if you're renting, there's nothing that says that you can't garden because you don't own the place. Absolutely not. Gardening in pots works. It's been done for centuries. And guys, if you get bored with it, then you just give it a lick of paint. Okay. Um, um, it, it's something that can change within an instant. Remember, think of things like grouping your pots in threes. Always important. And if you are going to be making choices and deciding on a range of pots, please make sure that you try and purchase all of them at once. Because with a lot of pots, what happens is when you go back and you're looking for something for the matching pot that you couldn't afford the previous month, it's gone. And the chances are that you might get the next, the same one ordered for you is not going to be very high because a lot of the pots are imported, especially the glazed pots. So please make sure use the facilities like credit facilities. That's why they're there. Um, but for me, terracotta pots like you're seeing on the left here on the shelf just work beautifully. And especially for herbs in courtyards and in hot sunny spots. Trees, guys, think twice before you remove a tree and Think very carefully when you plant a tree. When we're planting trees, we're not planting for us, we're planting for those generations. Before you move into, when you move into a home, a lot of people are very quick to remove trees. Please be very, very careful. Get the professionals in. Get them to give you an opinion on whether this is a good tree or bad tree. Worrying about the roots. And sometimes all the trees need is actually just a good pruning. That's sometimes all they need is, you know, a good haircut lifting the, the stems. And you can see this tree over here has been pruned beautifully. Why? Because when you look at it, the lower branches have been removed. So you're actually seeing the beauty of the tree. The beauty of the tree is its awesome stems, which means then that you can garden underneath. And here in the next slide is a perfect example because this tree has been lifted. So the lower branches removed. And by doing that, you have created so much more depth in the garden bed, at least three meters, which normally would just be plain. Okay. Right. Watering, guys, consider the watering of your garden. And I mean that from not wasting because water can be wasted very, very quickly. And make sure that you've got the right equipment, that your hoses aren't leaking, that you've got the right spray nozzles to actually do the job properly. All right, and make sure that you mulch. Mulching is a thick layer of organic material around any bare patches of soil. It's so important, really, really important. And I'm often asked, Tanya, what do I do on banks? Well, guys, banks is like such an opportunity because it's an opportunity to make a garden which ne not necessarily could easily have been there. But it's by grouping rocks, by using the plants, that are water-wise, that can cope with those hot, dry conditions, because a lot of banks are normally in the full blazing sun. So consider using plants 
which are architectural, like these beautiful aloes. Aloe ferox up here. These are the miniature aloes that just do such an amazing job. All right. And there you have it. And look at also the most important thing that I want you to learn out of this slide is texture. Gardens need not be all about flowers, but they can also just simply be about the texture of the plants. Here we've got beautiful greys with yellows. Succulents are all the rage and anybody can grow them. Right, guys, I am now going to go back to our questions and answers. Let's just have a look here. Let's see who's with me. Um, Sindiswa, um, fantastic. How do you get rid of those little white bugs, insects naturally? Sindiswa, it's really difficult um, to... <laughs> There, there are no, uh, there are no, hold on, I've got something going on here. Right, how do you get rid of them naturally? Pop down to your local builders, there's a couple of products. One is called Eco Buzz, okay, and it's called Pest Pro. If you've got white fly, Pest Pro will do the job. It's in a little sachet, one sachet goes into one liter water, spray it on, and it's really easy. The other thing that you can use is something called Margaret Roberts Organic Insecticide. Guys, it's simple. These products, you could drink them, you could put them in your coffee, and nothing will happen to you. They're good for the environment. They don't kill ladybirds. They don't kill good wasps. They don't kill bees. So please rather use those as a first choice. It's really important um, because it's all those other things in the garden that actually maintain the environment for you and me. All right. Which plants work well in the house? Lyndon, there are loads, okay? But if you want to start out, um, have a look just right here. Right, right here. Okay. These are beautiful plants. These are all actually from my home, um, peperomias. You'll find these fantastic, easy to grow, really easy. And they're one of the plants that NASA prescribes as the healthiest for cleaning air. Yeah. The guys at NASA do that, so like they know what they're doing, don't they? All right, birds nest ferns, brilliant, love the bathroom because they come from the tropical areas, from the forests, they grow in the trees. Birds nest ferns, this is an, a beautiful fern. Um, also, anthuriums, and guys, I just got to brag about the clivia. Clivia's on flower now. Watch out for that caterpillar, and if you do get that caterpillar, you've got to pop down to your local builders, and you've got to get the product called Lava Pro. Lava Pro is a natural um, inoculant, which you spray on the leaves. When said caterpillar starts eating, it basically causes the caterpillar to have a really upset tummy and it stops eating. If a bird picks up that caterpillar, it doesn't die. If you eat that caterpillar, nothing's going to happen to you. And if your child happens, happens to eat 20 caterpillars, guess what? Nothing happens to it or the dog. It's a completely natural product. All right, I hope that answers your question for the indoors. All right, let's go back up here. Uh, what would you suggest, this is from Ricardo, what would you suggest when your yard is fully paved and there are dogs that, <laughs> Ricardo, no, <laughs> wait a second. Then mm. there are dogs that bite everything and dig out plants. Ricardo, Ricardo, you got a story going there, my man. Um, and what can I get from builders to use as a barrier for the dogs? Okay, first up, dogs eat things and dig things because they are bored. Bored. They're like us. They need stuff. So let me tell you this, and you're going to think I'm completely mental, but you need to assign an area of your garden where they can have fun. So dig up some of that paving of yours because dogs don't live normally just on paved area. Seriously, now, Ricardo, listen to me. Lift up some of your paving. Dig out some of that soil. Go to builders and get some, um, what is it called? Um, play sand. You know sand that you put in a, in a children's playpen? Um, do you get children's playpens? Uh, what are they called? Sand pits. Sand pits. That's it. Go and get some of those bags. They sell it at builders. Put that sand in that area that you've dug up, okay, where you've removed the paving. Right? And then you want to go to the pet section. You know where they sell those hooves and treats and things like that? And you want to bury some of those in the sand. Oh, wowza. Now when the dog goes along, it starts digging. It doesn't get a harding. It doesn't get shouted at. You encourage it. You stroke it. You pet it. You give it good positive reinforcement. And the dog finds a treat. Voila, happy days. Okay, 
because then it's going to go and dig there before it goes and digs in your garden. All right. Try that and let me know because I guarantee it works. Uh, Ricardo, and oh, and the other thing is barriers for dogs. There are loads of things for barriers. You can buy little instant picket fences. You can buy little um, uh, kind of hoopty ones like this that are done out of plastic coated wire. They last really, really long. You can get expandable trellis that you simply need to knock a hole, at, um, a pole in here and a pole in there and a few cable ties and voila, you've got a fence. It doesn't need to be a five-day project. You can literally pop down, purchase the thing, pop in um, a dowel there, a dowel there, expand the trellis, or put your little piece of trellis there, and you sort it. And remember, cable ties for anybody, whether you're a DIY or a gardener or a man's best friend. All right. Um, oh, Ricardo, thanks. You said it makes sense. Give it a try, my friend. Um, really, dogs dig and are destructive because they bored. And give them lots of toys to play with. Give them lots of toys. Yeah, choose a pair of shoes. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's have a look here. Uh, Bernie, hello, wonderfully, really pleased got to hear you today. Oh, thank you, Bernie. Um, that's great. Thank you very, very much. How to get rid of that? Right, we've got that. Alani, um, where else? We had a... A question up here from Peter Brown. I want to get back to this question. Um, how can I grow the agriculture with low cost? Um, Peter, one of the best ways, and, and I firmly believe that in agriculture, South Africans, we need more farmers, we need more subsistence farmers, and the way that we do that is to grow food. Growing food is cheap. A packet of seed costs you hardly next to nothing. Go and buy packets of seeds and encourage local farmers to grow their own, and you too should be growing your own. Um, South Africa has a shortage of, of subsistence farmers, and that's what we need. Um, so from my side, um, I would certainly want to see that encouraged and wonderful that you've got a fish farm because we need more sustainable projects in and around our country. Brilliant. I'd love to actually hear more about it. Um, and who else do we have? Amanda's just sending me lots of flowers. So Asanda, um, I'm hoping that uh, that you've got a glorious garden here. But folks, remember, if you have any gardening questions, guys, uh, pop onto the Builders Facebook page. Remember, you can message us. We will answer them. In fact, I'm the one that answers them. So get onto um, the Builders Facebook page. Also remember to go to our, our YouTube channel, Builders Essay, where you'll find a whole lot more clips where yours truly is teaching you about different things in gardening. Not only gardening, but there's some really cool DIY clips there as well. And it's really important that you go back to those. Go back to them, because for any, you can click on whatever one you want. Also remember to go and visit the blog on the Builders um, website, because folks, there, there is loads of information. All you've got to do is just click to it. Folks, it's been an honor and a pleasure being with you this afternoon. Um, it really has. Thank you for the questions. I hope that you've enjoyed your time with me. Get down to builders and get it done. God bless you all and happy gardening.